Hi there. I'm Cindy Linden, and this is a Cook Along Podcast Quick Bite. There was a point when I started hearing about rice cookers, and at the time, I couldn't for the life of me figure out why anybody would want a rice cooker. I guess if you made rice every single day, and you needed to do a bunch of other things while it was cooking, then it would make sense to have one. But rice seems so easy to me to cook on a stovetop. And the formulas for making it a successful enterprise are easy. And I just couldn't figure out why anybody would want an automated device to do that. Then there came a point where it seemed desirable to be able to wake up in the morning and have oatmeal hot and cooked and ready to eat when you walked into the kitchen. So I started looking at devices that would do that. It had to have a delay so that it could come on in the wee hours of the morning. And then it had to have an automatic shut off. And it had to have a setting that would appropriately cook oatmeal. So I did a ton of research, looked at a bunch of different oatmeal making machines, and it became clear that the oatmeal machine I needed was a rice cooker. That was the first time that I thought, okay, this is a reasonable use for something called a rice cooker. It's gonna cook while I'm asleep. It's going to have my breakfast ready for me so I don't have to do the work and I don't have to try to squeeze in the time that it takes to make oatmeal. I can just open the rice cooker and eat it. So I found one that had a special setting that it said it could do oatmeal and read all the reviews and did all my due diligence in that regard. And then when I got it home, I discovered in trying to use it that it can't make a single serving of oatmeal. It'll make about four. Then I'm back to kind of the square I was at when I started, which is, okay, so I eat my hot oatmeal and then the rest has to go into some container, which by the next day, will not only be cold, but gluey and unpleasant. And that defeats the purpose of having the rice cooker in the first place. If I wanted it cold and gluey, I could make it ahead of time in a regular pot or in the microwave or whatever and put it in my fridge and eat it cold and gluey. That not being what I wanted, I quickly gave up on that idea. And then I realized, well, okay, here I have now this rice cooker What else can I do with it? Well, guess what? One of the things you can do with a rice cooker is make rice. So I tried that a few times and I discovered that there is indeed a virtue to having a rice cooker. If you're trying to have dinner right when you get home from work and you don't want to spend 20 minutes or 40 minutes cooking rice in a pot and you want it just ready for you when you walk in the door to go with something else that's already ready or in a slow cooker or something, then the rice cooker is a reasonable concept. I did find that it tends to kind of crisp up the bottom of my rice. I don't have a setting that allows it to choose a temperature. I just tell it what kind of rice I'm cooking and it does its own thing. And the default time seems to be 45 minutes for white rice which compared to what you would do on stovetop is twice as long. But again, it's working when I'm not home. And so whatever it needs to do, that's okay with me. I kind of like the crusty part on the bottom. It's golden brown and a little crunchy and kind of fun. It is not the ideal result for rice, but I don't mind it. And so maybe once or twice a year, I would pull out my rice cooker out of my pantry closet where I kept it because it's too big for the counter and set it up to make rice while I was away from the house. Over time, the real estate in the pantry became too precious to keep the rice cooker in there. And since I was only using it once or twice a year, it got relegated to a cabinet in my basement where it got pulled out maybe once a year because in my heart of hearts, I still believed this to be a foolish, unnecessary appliance. Kind of the epitome of a luxury item is to have a machine that cooks your rice for you. It still seems silly to me. However, a couple of weeks ago, I was looking for a new rice recipe that would go with the salmon I was serving. We like rice and fish together. So I wanted something that wasn't just plain old or buttered or 
soy sauce. I wanted something just a little new and a little different. And poking around online, I found a recipe on Spruce Eats called Easy Coconut Rice Made in a Rice Cooker. Now, you have to know that the first thing I did was say, oh yeah, but surely I can make that on my stovetop. And I went looking for an equivalent recipe to make on the stovetop. Well, it's a lot more complicated on the stovetop. It just takes a lot more fuss, a lot more hands-on interference. This You really just put everything in the rice cooker. In the past 10 days or so, I've made this recipe now three times. I love this recipe. I am now in love with my rice cooker. Unexpected romance in unforeseen places. Ordinarily, I don't even eat much coconut because the coconut fiber is a turnoff for me. It just takes too darn long to chew it. But I do like the flavor of coconut, just not the chewing part. So the coconut rice kind of appealed to me. And then when I saw how easy it is, that aren't a lot of ingredients and I had them all in the house, there's some variations to the recipe as well that gives you a chance to decide whether you want it sweet, which I haven't tried yet and seems a little weird, or savory. And I made it savory with a little added garlic. Loved it, loved it with the fish. And then I realized that it can be whatever I want it to be. It can still be coconut rice, but it can have all kinds of fun things in it. So last night, I added a little fresh rosemary that I chopped up and a tiny little, I think they're called sweet hot peppers. They're maybe the size of a very small mandarin orange and deep red. And really, they don't have any noticeable heat to them, but they're not quite just sweet either. And I just chopped that up really finely. And I put that and the rosemary in with this rice, along with the coconut. And it was fabulous. It really is so slightly different and completely addictive. It's hard to stop going back for more. So now I have a justification for owning a rice cooker and it's sitting in very valuable countertop real estate in my kitchen right now because I don't want to take it back down and have to pull it back up the next time I want this recipe, which is likely to be soon. If you have a rice cooker, you are in luck because I am going to share this recipe with you. I'm not going to cook it for you because there's no cooking involved. I'm just going to tell you what to do. And then if you have a rice cooker, you're going to let your rice cooker do all the cooking. If you don't have a rice cooker, you might look at your instructions for your instant pot or your slow cooker if you have one. I have not tried either of those things, but they might do this recipe as well. I think if you want to make it on a stovetop, you have to look for a different variation of this recipe. But let me tell you how easy this is. So you got your rice cooker bowl probably nonstick. I was trying to make enough rice for two people. And for that, I put in a cup of jasmine rice, which I had rinsed first to get off any talc, because sometimes they put talc on it to, I don't know why they do it, but they coat it with that when they're processing rice. And if you rinse it, it washes off some of the starch that makes it clump together in ways you really don't want it to. So I put in a cup of rice, and a cup of water. And I found that those amounts make about three servings of rice as a side dish. And then a half a cup of full fat coconut milk. And what I had on hand was actually called coconut cream. And it came from Trader Joe's. I think you would not want to use the light stuff because I'm sure stuff with more fat in it has not only more flavor, but also has bearing on the consistency of the finished rice quarter of a teaspoon of kosher salt. And then the author of this recipe put about a heaping tablespoon of dry, unsweetened or sweetened shredded coconut in it. And I actually did that the first couple of times and I liked it. There's just enough to kind of flavor the rice without making it a, an overly long chewing issue for me. Now, obviously, if you want enough rice for five or six people, you want to double all of that, which is what the Spruce Eats recipe original is, is twice this much. Now, as I said, one of the variations on this recipe suggested putting in about a teaspoon of minced garlic. So I found a nice big clove of garlic and I squashed it in my garlic press 
which makes pieces that are big enough to be like minced garlic. You just add that to the cooking liquid. So all the things I just said go into the pot. You close the lid. You turn on the rice cooker. You let it do its thing. When it turns itself off or when it goes to the warm setting, because it also will keep it warm for you if you get held up in traffic on the way home from work, leave it on the warm setting for about 10 minutes. That will help make sure it's fully cooked and just sticky enough to hold together a little bit. Then open up the lid and drop in about a tablespoon of salted butter. Stir it up and then serve it. You want to taste it to see if it needs a little more salt, but you can always add salt at the table as well. So you don't really have to do anything more. Now, as I said, last night I added little tiny chopped pieces of a sweet red pepper and chopped rosemary. The reason I did that is because those two things were sitting in my refrigerator. It was really, really good. Hard to stop eating. And I wasn't sure whether the rosemary, for instance, would work with the coconut. It did. It went great with the coconut. So now I'm looking forward to seeing what else might be left in my refrigerator to flavor this rice with. Certainly, the rice cooker has now earned its place back in my kitchen rather than being stuck in the dark of my basement. And I just wanted to share with you that discovery, both of the usefulness of the rice cooker and this really nice recipe that you can do in the drop of a hat, although you may, I suppose, have to go out and buy some coconut milk. But here's the thing to know is that that can of coconut milk will make about three batches of this rice, which means it's sitting there in your refrigerator waiting for you to make it again. And that's why the rice cooker doesn't go back to the basement. <laughs> The other variations that are suggested is tossing the finished rice with two to four tablespoons of chopped cilantro or sliced green onions. That's not as it's cooking. And please note that the peppers and the rosemary I put in while it was cooking. I just added it to the pot. And the author says that the rice will keep in the fridge for up to five days in an airtight container. And it also freezes well. So if you wanted to freeze it and have it ready for eating at the drop of a hat, you can freeze it in a Ziploc bag in portion sizes that makes sense for you and then defrost it in the microwave or the refrigerator and then reheat it completely in a pot. So you want to defrost it and then you have to warm it up. You may have to add a little bit of liquid such as water or a little additional coconut milk to rehydrate it. Try this next time you are wondering what to have for a side dish. If you have a rice cooker or an instant pot that will behave like a rice cooker, give this a shot. You got nothing to lose and a new favorite side dish to gain. Let me know what you think. Reach out to me at the cookalongpodcast.com contact page. Tune in two weeks from today for another Quick Bite podcast. Tune in next week for my discovery of a truly unmatched lemon icebox pie. Until next time, happy cooking! <laughs>